Tonight, everybody sit down now. I'm going to have some preaching. Amen. But Brandon's finally made it in. And uh, he's going to come preach our first message tonight. And we're going to have some good things tonight. And tomorrow morning, we got some real special things planned. And uh, the rest of the week, surprise guests coming tomorrow. All kind of good things happen. Uh, I want to say, appreciate everybody helping us uh, clean up the mess. Everything's looking fairly good. And I want you to sit down and listen to this preacher. He's going to bring the Word of God to us tonight. And so you don't want to miss. Don't miss nothing. But come on, preacher. I appreciate Brother Brandon Bruce. And uh, uh, he's going to come and bring a message tonight. And so you give him your attention tonight while he preaches. Amen. Thank you, Brother Daniel. Am I on? You got me on here? All right. Luke chapter number 13, if you have your Bible. Boy, I've heard I've missed some good meetings, some good carrying on around here. Lord have mercy. I've heard there's been some good preaching and people getting saved, and that's wonderful. And uh, I'm, most of you know by now, but I'm not pastoring at Victory now. I'm at uh, Friendship Baptist Church in Rome, Georgia. And uh, some of them come with me. If you come with me, raise your hand right here. Yeah, this bunch right here. We're going to try. We brought 14 up, I think. We're going to try to get some to come back next year. Uh, Lord willing. Luke chapter 13. And uh, I want to preach on a message that I've, I've never preached before. I, as far as I know, I've never preached on this. And uh, I'm going to try to just bring out a few thoughts to you. Luke chapter 13, verse number 31. And uh, did y'all notice how tight it was just like as that service started out it just seemed like you nothing went right nothing do right that's usually when the lord's doing the most work don't you ever get discouraged when you get up here and you get saying you think man i can't do it i've done it preaching so many times i guarantee you danny can tell you every, it just seemed rick ain't it right ricky you get in there man you get to struggling and it just seemed like you can't get it out ronnie and it just won't come and Usually that's when God's really getting that plow down in there and getting a hold of somebody. So, uh, you know, you just, you just pray for a service tonight. That preacher gets to struggling. It, it's not. It's intentional. It's, it's, it's satanic warfare. And God knows, that, and the devil knows as well, in this service tonight, these young people are going to go back to their home and, and they need something good right here. They're gonna go back to they're gonna go back to living in 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 hell holes that that, that, ain't, that resemble this camp in no no sense, and they're gonna go back into the lifestyle that they uh, uh, they that they come out of the the living situations they come out of, and they need something in here tonight. And the devil knows that if he can hinder that, he will. So uh, you don't ever get discouraged when it seems like it's not going right. It ain't your fault. There's a reason for that. Luke chapter 13, verse number 31. And the same day there were there came certain of the Pharisees saying unto him, Get thee out and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils and do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following for it cannot be that a prophet perisheth out of Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophet and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Verily I say unto you, you shall not see me until the time come. When you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Well, tonight, we'll look at this passage of Scripture. Just a few things I'd like to point out, I guess, as getting started uh, before I approach my main thought. Uh, verse number 31, the same day the Pharisees come to him and said, Boy, you, you ought to get out of here. He's trying to kill you. Uh, I thought... Last night I thought, well, since when did the Pharisees get so concerned with the safety of Jesus? Do you know there's a motive behind that? They, they said, man, you better get out of here. Uh, if you don't get out of here, Herod's going to kill you. And I'm thinking if you do get out of here, they're going to kill you. So, you, you know, either way. 
But, but you notice in uh, verse number 32, it's obvious Jesus wasn't real concerned with Herod's threat, was he? I mean, he said, you go tell that fox. Herod's going to kill you, man. He's, he, he's got more power than anybody. He's going to kill you. And he said, you run up there and tell that fox. Here's a man that walked everywhere he went. I, I, he didn't have nothing, no education, no pull whatsoever, except he created the universe. But other than that, he didn't have really no pull or, or anything like that. And he says, uh, you run up there and tell that fox that uh, I'm doing miracles down here. I'm doing all this kind of stuff. In other words, Jesus was saying, I, I come to lay down my life. It, my life will not be taken by a Pharisee, by head, by anybody until I get ready to take it, uh, lay it down. Right, listen, he said, no man taketh my life from me. He said, I lay it down. And he said, I'll take it up again when I get ready to. Now, I don't understand for the life of me the thinking of Herod, the thinking of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. When Jesus is going around healing men and raising men from the dead that have been dead for four days, you ought to leave a dude like that alone. I mean, when he can fix people that's been dead for four days, leave the fella alone. We ain't talking about going down to guy's house and grabbing his daughter. We ain't talking about catching one on the way to the graveyard. We're talking about one that's done put in the ground, covered up, I mean, everybody's walked away. The flower's done wilted, Ronnie. And he walks up and says, get up out of the ground. And he gets up out of the ground. Leave a man like that alone. You can't kill something that's got that kind of ability. But they didn't get it. And then, and, and then if you'll notice, we've, I, I didn't mean to say all that, but I did. Uh, verse number 34, uh, Jesus in verse number 34, it says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets and stones them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen doth gather a brood under her wings, and you would not. Now, Jesus don't speak out of anger here. He's not angry. He don't look at them and say, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often? I? It's not like that. It's a scene, I believe, and it don't say in here, Brother Ricky, but it don't say in neither place in Matthew or Luke. It don't say this, Scott, but I, I believe there were tears running out of his eyes and running off his cheeks. I believe he might have had to get his handkerchief out and, and wiped his eyes a little bit. I mean, listen, he, he's, he's speaking with a broken heart. He's not mad at him. He loves him. He said, how often I gathered you together. In Isaiah 65 and 2, he said, I've, he said, I've sp spread out my hands all day unto rebellious people. How often I would have gathered you together as a hen doth her brood, but you would not. God just keeps making His appeal to them. And they just keep on rejecting, kept on rejecting. He just appeals to them and, and appeals to them and they kill His messengers and despise His inv invitation. And Ain't it amazing that God uh, God's merciful and gracious to rebels like that. Amen. I mean, you know, sometimes it'd be easy to say, I can't believe them Pharisees rejected Him like that. And I can't believe that crowd rejected Him. And then I look back over my own life, Ronnie Bird, and I think, look at how many times, Brother Rick, I turned my back on Him. And, and, I, and I didn't open right, reject Him. But in my heart, I said, no, Lord, I, I don't want nothing to do with that. And, and listen, He's appealing to Him. He said, I'd have gathered you together as a hen doth her brood, but she would not. How often I would, but she would not. That's one of the most anti-Calvinistic verses in the Bible. I mean, you think about it. I mean, I, I see the appeal of Calvinism and predestination and, and foreknow and all that. And I understand all that kind of stuff. But then on the other side, you you got to deal with the fact that there's stuff that God dropped in there just like that. And He said, i got my hand outstretched. I'm beckoning you. I'm wooing you. I'm pleading with you. I'm troubling you so. I'm making appeal to you. I've got my hands outstretched. And I, I want you to come, but but you won't come to me. Hey, listen, that, that ain't got really anything to do 
with sovereignty at all. That's got to do with the human will. It's got to do with the, the, the people of that nation who turned their back on the one who came to love them and deliver them and save them. I want to tell you something, friend. God today still has a hand outstretched. And I'm glad, thank God, for the 15 in this building tonight. And say, Lord, I'll take a hold of that hand. I, I want to go with you. I want what you got to offer. Yeah. Some people probably still sitting in this place tonight. And you know what you're doing? You're sitting in here tonight and God's saying, oh, how often I would have. And you're saying, no, I, ain't, I don't want that. I don't want that. Well, uh, this is the Lord's final appeal to the nation of Israel before Calvary. This is it. He's going to die on the cross in a few days. He'll make another appeal. He'll make another appeal to the nation of Israel till Acts chapter number 8. And at the stoning of Stephen, the Lord flips in chapter number 9. He calls a man by the name of the Apostle Paul. And he says, Paul, I got a job for you to do. He said, I've stretched out my hand. I've opened my arms. I've sat here with my wings open trying to gather them our little chicks in. They will not. They wouldn't come to me. But he said, Paul, I got a job for you. I got a mission for you. And what I want you to do, Paul, is I want you to take this gospel message. I want you to get up there. I want you to get up there into Asia Minor. I want you to get up there in them European nations. I want you to spread this gospel. Hey, listen, it don't matter if they're red, yellow, black, or white. It don't really matter where they come from, how much money they got. It don't matter if they even know what Judaism is. It don't matter if they know that I come up there and brought them children of Israel up out of Egypt. You just go tell them that God sent His Son and He died for their sins on an old rugged cross. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Go tell them, Paul. Go tell them, Paul. Go tell them, whosoever come in. I listen, the Lord said, I would have gathered you together. You would not. And God said, if you won't do it, I'll find somebody who will. God makes one more appeal. It comes to us old Gentiles. You know what that means? That means Mama Hen's still in business, bless God. Praise the Lord for that, Brother Ricky. Those wings are still outstretched. She's still specking in them little hens, them little chicks to come up to Mama Hen. And she's got a place for them. I want to tell you something. What an interesting analogy. The hen and the chick. I got to study about that a little bit before we preach about tonight. I got to study about that hen, that little chick. I've never studied before in my life. I've read that. I've talked about that. I've, I probably threw it in a message somewhere along the line, but I never thought about that hen and that little chick. And you know, when I got studying that thing, I'm telling you what, I'm about if Ronnie Bird had been with me, we'd have tore the car up and then went toward my study up. And then we'd probably just tore each other up. I don't know. Just had an I mean, we, we, I had a time. One of the first things that I began to read was some facts about uh, chicks and their little hens. And, and it was just blowing my mind when I read that. And, and did you know a hen speaks to her little chicks before they're ever born? I didn't know that. Inside that egg, they, 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 they can't see her. But 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 they can hear her on the outside and they're down inside that little egg there and they hear that voice speaking to them. Chirp, 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 chirp. And that was a poor imitation of a hen, I know. Cheep, 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 cheep. No, that's the little chick. I don't know. There we go. And uh, and, and and there she is, and and, and they can't see her. And I just think, I, in my mind, I'm thinking, Scott Hefner, I, I'm thinking that here's this little chick sitting in total darkness. It can't see it, anything. It's enclosed, it's engulfed in, in darkness, and all of a sudden, at one day, it hears a voice. He knows there ain't room inside that little egg for anybody else. He looks around a little bit, says, so I don't see nothing up in here. Where'd that come from? On the outside, he hears that, that voice again and, and he hears that, 
he hears that voice speak to him. And one day when the timing's right, by faith, he takes his little beak and he knocks a hole in that egg. And when he knocks a hole in that egg, I mean, he didn't know what was out there, but he took a chance. He took a leap of faith that there was something out there because he knew there sure wasn't nothing going on in there. And he knew there's more out there. And, he, and by faith, he knocks a little hole in that thing. And when he does, a little light comes in. He had been living in total darkness, but all of a sudden, Hey, some light shining through that little thing. And, and listen, when, when that light comes in, he's saying, hey, that voice is clearer now than it's ever been. I think I'll take another stab at this thing. Punk. And it knocks another little hole. And pretty soon, that little chick that was living in a world of darkness is introduced to a world of light. All of a sudden, that little chick that was living in darkness, he's living in a world of light. And you and I as sinners, brother, according to Colossians chapter 1, verse number 13, the Bible said that we've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. We went from darkness to light all because the light came on one day. You know, something interesting I read about that. And all of a sudden, we was in, living in a whole new world. I literally watched this, and you don't see something blow my mind, Brother Ricky. That I, it just, you wouldn't get this unless you were studied like this. I watched some little chicks being hatched. Now, I, mean, God, I got up all in this thing, man. I was watching these little videos, these little chicks being hatched. I'd never seen nothing like this before in my life. I didn't know that much. I've worked in chicken houses. I've been around chicken. I worked at a hatchery when I was in college, man. I, I know about chickens hatching. I didn't know this about it. I watched them little chickens being hatched, and one of them had come out of his shell. <laughs> he got to strutting around there a little bit. And over here on the other side, Brother Danny, has another, and he's trying to get out of his shell. I, if I hadn't seen this, I wouldn't have believed it. And, 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 and that other one over here, he, he, he's starting to get the feel of it, Ronnie. He got the easing around there, and he's feeling pretty cocky then. Must have been a rooster. He got the easing around there, and he looked over at his buddy, and his buddy got his beak through there, but that's about as far as he got. And that other chick that had just got hatched out, Brother Ricky, he went over and started pecking on that shell and helped him get hatched out. I thought, glory to God, I remember a day, brother, I'd knocked a little hole in that egg. There's a little light coming through. I'm glad an old-time preacher man who had got hatched some time ago come over there and help hatch me out, glory to God. He helped me break out of my shell. Oh, I'm thankful for that. Amen. It's good every now. I guarantee somebody running down to this altar last night. And somebody who's already been hatched out run up here with a Bible and help them get hatched out. Amen. <laughs> hey, by the way, everybody, all chickens get hatched. <laughs> I ain't got time for all this, but there ain't but one way to get born as a chicken. <laughs> and there ain't but one way to get born again as an old sinner, brother. And you get to get washed in the blood that Jesus Christ shed at Calvary. Yeah. Amen. And so, oh my goodness, I ain't got time for all, all, everything. But uh, hey, did you know chickens can navigate? They can even tell what time. Is, what time? Is. Listen, chickens know where they're going. And they know what time of day it is because they watch the sun. <laughs> yep, you keep your eye on the sun, brother. You'll know exactly where you're headed in this whole world. You'll know exactly what time it is. And I want to tell you something, Paul said it like this. He said it's high time that we as children of the light wake out of our sleep. I'm telling you, we're living in a world of darkness, but we know that just any day now that things going to change in our life. Amen. Now listen, listen. I'm going to give you a couple of things right quick and I'll be done. A couple of things. Uh, 
the Lord woke me up. I mean, I believe the Lord woke me up. I don't know. Maybe I woke myself up. I don't know. It was good either way. Four o'clock in the morning, I woke up, sat straight up in the bed. And, and what come to my mind is, why do chickens get under the mother's wing? I'd never preached on that day in my life. I'd never thought about that. I just woke straight up in the bed, sat up, and I thought, why, didn't, why do them little chicks get up under their mother's wing? Why do they do that? You see, those, those little chicks, they, uh, they, can, uh, they can know their mother's voice and, and they, they know her voice. And Do you realize that you can take those little chicks and you can put them amongst other little chicks? You can mix them all up. You can put them in a room. You can spread out their mothers. You can spread the chicks away. And them mother hens, when they get to chirping a little bit, them little chicks get to peeping just a little bit. And it ain't long. And them little chicks, they can hear their mother's voice. And they know it. And they won't listen to, they don't listen to that other voice. They know their mama's voice because they, that's the voice that born, birthed them into this world. That's the voice that they heard. Hey, listen, Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. He said, the sheep know my voice. A stranger's voice will they not follow. If you know his voice, hey, listen, it's real important for their survival that they stay close to their mother, stay close to mama hen, and they stay close by communication. They communicate with each other. That mama hen will say, burp, 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 burp. That, little chief, that little chick will go, beep, 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 beep. Burp, 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 beep, beep, beep. It's just like continual communication. It's called monologuing. I learned that on the way down here today. Hey, listen. There them little old chicks are. They're following their mama around. They're staying in close communication. Mama's like, duck, 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 duck. or she's saying, hey, come over this way. <laughs> Follow me over here. Come on, y'all want something to eat? The food's over here. You know what I mean? And pretty soon, you know what they find out? After uh, staying in close communication, she always leads them, right? She cares them where the food is. She cares them where the water is. It's real important for them to stay real close to their mothers because, hey, listen, them chicks are born without feathers. They are dependent upon getting up under those wings and in the, in the night time hours when the sun's not shining in the winter time they get right up under old mama hen and, and because they hadn't got the feathers and they ain't got the uh, pro protection from the weather and the cold outside mama hen takes care of them and I want to tell you something she knows exactly hey listen that's what the mama hen does she assures them she comforts them and, and they get uh, this assurance and comfort from being near her. They love the sweetness of her voice. And, and then I want you to think about something for just a minute. Now think about this. That little chick runs up under its mama's wing to be protected from predators. Uh, it's kind of like Jesus told Peter. He said, Peter, he said, I want you to know something. He said, uh, the devil hath desired to have you. Satan has desired to have you. He may sift you as wheat. And what he was saying is, you got an enemy. You got a predator. You got one that's looking for you. He's going to come after you. And boy, old Peter found out firsthand. It didn't take him long to go from the top to the bottom. It didn't take Peter long at all. And you know what Peter done? Some years later, in 1 Peter chapter 5, you know what Peter says? In verse number 8, he said, Boys, you better be sober. You better be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, He's walking about seeking whom he may devour. I want to tell you something, friend. That old mother hen walks around and she walks around them youngins. She's always on the lookout for danger. She's always looking for those predators. And those predators always come after the weakest one. Or the one that wanders far from mama hen. 
And it's really important that during this youth camp this week and Bible camp, I don't care how young you are, how old you are, it's really important this week that you uh, you get close to the Lord because the further you wander away from Him, the more danger you're in. The further you get away from His voice and the less communication you have with Him. When you quit reading that Bible and you quit praying, hey, them little chicks love companionship. And when you quit gathering around with them other little chicks up under mama hen, and when you quit having that companionship and that brotherly love and gather around at the church and enjoying the Word of God and praying, guess what? You're going to be weak and you're going to be a prime target for the devil to get a hold of. James said in James 4 and 7, he said, submit yourselves therefore unto God. Resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Submit yourselves unto God. You know what that means? Run under his wing. Yeah. Amen. Oh, Paul, oh, David said in Psalm 23, verse number 4, he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he said, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. And you know that enemy can come after us, but you know what? He can't do nothing when we get up under that wing as long as we're secure under that wing he ain't a thing in the world he can do about it hey there's one thing about it the devil can run you so far but there's just a place where he has to get off I remember many times the devil getting on my case and getting on my case and getting after me and somebody said what do you do I tell you what I do I run down an altar somewhere I get on my knees I carry it back to Calvary where that blood was shed he can't handle that blood, brother. You carry him back to the cross and, and find out he's a defeated foe and, and you find out you're secure under your Lord's wing. Paul said, no man stood with me. And, and, but he said, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. I was watching Unsolved Mysteries one night. It pays to stay close to the Lord. He'll protect you. I was watching Unsolved Mysteries one night. And it was showing this thing about a church out in Nebraska. And I don't know if that even show even comes on anymore, but it was a church out in Nebraska, and they're supposed to have choir practice like at 6 o'clock. We got choir practice at 6 o'clock. i never forget this. They didn't understand it. I mean, normally there was 30, 35 that gathered around, had choir practice, just a small community, but they had choir practice. And, and then it was just kind of interesting that that all those people that were supposed to be there at 6.30, this has never happened before, but uh, oh, so-and-so, something come up with them. And, and, and then uh, the Smiths down here, they, you know, they got a call and they had run down uh, emergency room. Somebody had, had failed. And, and, and then the Joneses over here, uh, they had company just showed up and it was going to be a little bit late. And, and the choir director had something come up and he, he called his assistant and couldn't get a hold of him. And, and he thought, well, I'll just be a little bit late. And pretty soon, one by one, none of them showed up. And at 6 10, when the choir practice should have been going, the church blew up because of a gas leak. Now, how do you explain that any other way? That there's a bunch up there that was up under the Lord's wings, and he said, hey, if you'll listen to my voice, if you'll stay in close communications with me, I'll protect you. I'll protect you. And then he gives them shelter from the storm. Me and my co-worker, one of my co-workers was out in uh, San Antonio, Texas, by the way, Graham, just, just a few months ago. I'm going to say this as I get ready to close. I was out in San Antonio, Texas, and we went to, uh, we were at an auto auction. And that night, I told him, I said, you want to go across town? There's a place we'd like to eat where on the other side of town. It's a pretty long drive, but it's a good place to eat. I said, you want to go over there and eat tonight? And he said, yeah, that'd be good. So we, we load up and, and we go over to this place to eat. And when we come back across, get in our car to come back across town, I said, hey, I said, I need some stuff at Walmart. I said, would it bother you, bother you if I run into Walmart? And he's like, no. No, I guess we'll go ahead. I said, okay. 
So I go in Walmart, and you know how it is when you get in Walmart, you think something else, you know. We killed about 20 minutes probably in Walmart, and we, we run out to the car, and we got in the car, and we come back. And as we get back to our hotel, I could tell something's going on. There's sirens going off everywhere. Sirens going off everywhere. And I thought, my Lord, have mercy, what's going on here? And uh, we go to get off in an underpass. The water was so deep, it rained so hard since we had been gone that our headlights were underwater and I was afraid it was going to come in the doors of the car. We drove up to our hotel, and we drove up to our hotel. Everybody in our hotel was outside. I said, why in the world is going on, man? Every, all the windows was busted out, cars were beat up, and, and it, it was just crazy. I mean, and they said, uh, man, you just missed it. I said, just missed what? And they said, Man, you, you wouldn't believe the hailstorm it just hit right here. I said, well, I can see big chunks of ice still laying around out here. And they said, man, you, it, it ain't been gone five minutes. Yeah. I looked out there in that parking lot, Ronnie, and it just reminded me. I pulled up out there in that parking lot, and I parked my car. I was staying in the same hotel them people were staying in. I was parking in the same parking lot they was parking in. Yeah. I looked out there in that parking lot, Ricky Williams. Hey, wasn't a, they wasn't a car out there that didn't have holes that big through the glasses of it. Them cars, the tops was beat in, the sunroof was knocked out of them. Our hotel, our hotel, every window on the backside was knocked out of that hotel. I mean, I'm talking about it knocked the windows out of the hotel. It knocked every window out of the, out of the cars. And I pulled my car up in there, Shane. Ain't a scratch on it, man. I mean, I just know. I don't believe God sent you to Walmart, but I believe He did that night. I pulled up in there. I thought, man, that's the way it is for a child of God, man. Hey, man, you listen to the voice of God. You follow God. He'll shout to you in the storm. And I thought, man, what a great picture. There it is, all the world's lying in destruction. And there you are, man. You ain't got a scratch on you. You've been safe and secure up under the wing. Of your Lord. Years ago out in the Midwest, old farmer was walking across the walking across the barnyard after a hell storm, just like the one I seen. He gets out there, Ronnie, out in the middle of that out in the middle of that barnyard and there's a, a mother hen just sitting straight down out in the middle of that barnyard. And that farmer thought, well, that's strange. That's strange because what hen would uh, just sit down out in the open during a hailstorm? Why didn't she run for cover? He says he got close to her, Ricky. He said he... He kicked her, and when he did, there's a bunch of little old chicks run out from under there. And boy, I thought, what a wonderful illustration. Boy, and I thought, Brother Scott, I thought about, I thought about there that old hen said, and she had gathered those chicks up, and she said, hey, you get up under here. The hell can come and the lightning can strike and the rain can fall and the storm and the wind can blow and the storm can rage. But if you get up under here and all them chickens made out of that thing. And I thought, man, what a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. 2,000 years ago, that day on Calvary, as He hung His hands out on that cross, and He said, let the hell come, and let the judgment come, and let the sin come. And He said, all oh, you that, hey, hey, that will, let them come and, and gather up under these wings. Oh, oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I would have got you as a hen doth her room and Jesus Christ that day took our pain he took our sin he took our judgment and just like old mama hen he stretched his arm out and said all that want to gather under these wings let them gather under these wings I'll take the brunt of the storm I believe that old woman taken in adultery the Lord said gather up under here she said, uh, 
uh, she gathered there, and the Pharisee said, she needs to be stoned. And I believe old Jesus stretched his wings out over and said, well, just go ahead. You are without sin, but you're going to have to stone me. You stone her. Yeah. Old prodigal son come home, and his father ran and met him and fell on him. And he said, hey, neighbors, if you want to stone my boy, you got to stone me to get to him. Yeah. That day as he died on Calvary, that old thief on the other side right there, he looked over and he said, uh, Lord, remember me when you come to your kingdom. What he was in essence saying, and I'm not adding to the Bible, but what he was saying, you got any room up under that wing? And Jesus was like, yes, yeah, I don't know, but there's a little room under here. How often I would have. But you know what he said? But you would not. You would not. You see, the thing about this is that the Lord's willing. I don't think he wants nobody to die and go to hell. I don't think anybody. I don't care what sin you've committed. I don't care where you've been or what you've done. And grace is either grace or it ain't grace. And grace is it. Hey, listen, the Lord said where sin did abound, there did grace much more abound. And somebody said, yeah, but look how wicked they are. Yeah, but look how much more graceful he is. He said, I would have, but, but you wouldn't. Lord's willing tonight. question is, are you? Are you? Let's take this a minute here tonight and uh, search our hearts. You wouldn't just bow your head, please. And get right to the Lord. Will that help me? That help me. I need that. You tell the Lord you're sorry for all your sins. I come on sorry for my sins all day long. But Jason played something softly tonight. No, no. I appreciate Brother Brandon. Appreciate that good preaching tonight. I love everybody in here. And I hope you love me. If you don't, I'm sorry. I'm sorry when choir spring that song on you on me to go to play with it. That's my fault. I'm sorry for not being a better man, not being a better preacher, not being a better daddy, not being a better husband. I am. I want God's grace. What he said to our God's grace reaches all of us. And we all need it. Don't ever get to the point where you think, bless God, I'm so right, I don't ever need forgiveness. But well, yeah, that's when you're in worse shape you've ever been. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. Maybe you need to just slip in and see God. That's what you care it's all about. And y'all just need to come and let's pray tonight. Amen. Amen. Just slide right out of your seat and come. Amen. That's right, boys. Well, I'm glad some of our boys, I want all y'all boys to get it, but I really want our boys to get it. They ain't need it worse than anybody. Amen. Now, that's why I know all you preachers feel about your group. You want your kids to get it. Somebody said one time, they said, Preacher, the Lord's really moving in camp, but I want our group to get in on it. Every preacher feels that way. Let's get in on this tonight. Let's come and pray. Amen, boys. Amen. Y'all keep praying like that. You'll, you'll get it. It'll take one of these days. You keep hitting that holder like that. That's right. Amen. Amen. And just let God hit me now. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Dear God, we pray. Lord God, we pray forgiveness of all of our sin, every attitude, every thought, every word, we spoke, every step we took. Everything we've done wrong, everything that we have done that we should have done, we ask forgiveness. Cleanse us right now in the blood of Jesus. I'm glad that grace does reach us all. Amen. Have your way in our hearts, Lord. God, do something in the rest of this service tonight. Move in here with power. I plead the blood of Jesus over everything here tonight. Lord, run the devil out of here. I plead the blood. I, I, I thank you for what the preacher said a minute ago about that blood. I plead the blood over this place. I plead the blood over every young person, every preacher, every pastor, every worker, every mom and dad, 
God, I plead the blood over us tonight. Run the devil out of this place, Lord. I pray, God, that your will will be done here tonight. Holy Ghost, touch heart. Say it somebody here tonight. Lord, God, do something in everybody's life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for what you did in here last night and this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Start praying tonight. If you need to pray, good time to pray. Some of these kids praying for their mamas and daddies. Some of them praying for friends back home. Some of them praying for themselves, their, their family. Ain't no telling. No telling what some of them tore up about. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. I heard people even criticize the young people. Ah, them kids run up there that all, Rev. That might do us all good to do that. Yeah. 